Hello, I'm Jason Tamaric. As filmmakers, we measure changes in the brightness of light using an F number. Now, F numbers are not an absolute measurement in the way that a kilometer measures a specific distance or a liter measures a specific volume. Rather, it's a relative unit that measures the change in the amount of light. In this lesson, I'm going to explain how f-stops work and how you can use them to help determine the exposure of your shot. Quite simply, an f-number is the doubling or halving of the brightness of light. If you take the existing amount of light, however much that may be, and double its brightness, you just increase the light by one f-number. Conversely, if you take the current amount of light and reduce it by 50%, you just decreased it by one F number. You may be wondering why I'm calling it an F number and not an F stop. Well, the F number can either be an F stop or a T stop. Now, technically, an F stop is the focal length of a lens divided by the diameter of the aperture. It's a mathematical calculation in the change of light, and f-stops work in an ideal world where 100% of the light makes it through the lens to the imaging sensor. Unfortunately, it is impossible to manufacture optical glass without any imperfections, and some of the light will always be lost to refraction and diffusion before it finally reaches the camera's imaging sensor. Now, whereas f-stops measure how much light should make it through to the lens, T-stops measure how much light actually makes it through. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the differences between F-stops and T-stops later in this video, but for now, I will refer to the F number as F-stops, which is the term most commonly used by filmmakers. All right, you'll notice that every single lens has a set of numbers printed on it. 1.4, 2.0, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and 22. Well, these numbers are f-stops, and they indicate how open or closed the lens's aperture is. If you open the aperture by one f-stop, you let twice as much light pass through the lens. If you close the aperture by one f-stop, you cut the amount of light in half. But why are f-stops such strange numbers? I mean, wouldn't it be easier to simply call them f1, f2, f3, f4, and so on? Well, f-stops aren't just the size of the aperture, but rather a ratio of the aperture opening to the focal length of the lens. Consider this. We build an image in our camera by using the lens to collect light rays, then focusing those rays onto the imaging sensor. We already established that if you double the size of the aperture opening, you collect twice as many light rays. But lenses come in different focal lengths, which change the angle of view and as a result, the amount of light that passes through it. So shorter focal length lenses produce a wider field of view, and longer focal lengths produce a narrower field of view. If you compare two lenses, say a 24 millimeter lens and a 50 millimeter lens, the 50 millimeter lens has twice the focal length as the 24 millimeter lens and produces a narrower field of view. Well, the image that is produced by the 50 millimeter lens is four times bigger than the image produced by the 24 millimeter lens. And you would need an imaging sensor four times the size to capture the same field of view as the 24 millimeter lens. Well, since the size of our imaging sensor is fixed, only a quarter of the entire image covers the sensor, which is why the field of view appears narrower than in a short focal length lens. Since only a quarter of the image covers the imaging sensor, only a quarter of the light rays that pass through the lens reaches the imaging sensor. All right, now let's take a look at the aperture opening. If you double the diameter of the lens's aperture, you are increasing the area of the aperture's opening four times. So when you take both factors into account, increasing the light entering the lens four times by opening the aperture and decreasing the amount of light captured by the lens because of the longer focal length, the two values balance each other out and the light collected by the sensor remains the same. That's why an f-stop factors both the size of the aperture opening and the focal length, which determines how much of the image actually fits onto the sensor. And that's why we use the same f-stop scale for every lens regardless of the focal length. 
Therefore, an f-stop of a lens is the focal length divided by the diameter of the aperture. Because of this ratio, the bigger the f-stop number, the more closed the aperture. The smaller the f-stop number, the more open the aperture. So an f1.4 is a much larger aperture opening and lets more light pass through than a lens set at an f11. All right, I wanna geek out for just a minute. Now, I mentioned earlier that doubling the focal length reduced the field of view by a quarter, and doubling the diameter of the aperture opening increases the light four times. Well, both values are a factor of two. And if you want to cut the amount of light reaching the sensor in half without changing the image size, then you need to close the aperture by factors of the square root of two. Well, think about it. What's the square root of two? 1.4 which happens to be the f-stop when the aperture is wide open. If we want to have the amount of light again, then we must multiply the square root of two times the square root of two, which is two. That gives us our next f-stop value of f2. The square root of two multiplied to the third power is 2.8, and so on. So every time you double the f-stop, you're cutting the light passing through the lens in half. This ratio between the aperture and the focal length is why the f-stop range works the same for every lens. So we know that f-stops are the doubling of the amount of light being left through the lens. So if I open up my aperture by one f-stop, I am letting twice the amount of light pass through to the imaging sensor. So what happens if we increase our aperture by say three stops? Well, if you guessed we increase the light value six times, you're wrong because we're actually increasing the light value eight times. How does this work? Well, the first stop is doubling the amount of light. The second stop doubles it again, so we now have four times the amount of light. And then we double it again by opening up a third f-stop, which doubles it again, so we have eight times the amount of light than we did in the original setup. So let me show you how you can use this practically on set. All right, so Caroline is here, and I've got my light meter. And I'm gonna take a meter reading right here of our key light, and it's giving me a result of an f5.6. So if I set my aperture to an f5.6, I know that uh, it is going to be exposing her skin tones at middle gray. So I'm gonna open up by a stop and a half to get the proper exposure on her skin tones. Okay, now let's say we increase the brightness of our key light. like so. Now, if you take a look at the shot here, you'll notice that Carolina's skin tones are definitely blown out. We are exceeding the latitude of the camera. So if I take another light meter reading, my meter is now showing an F11. So we just increased the light value four times. So in order to compensate to get the same exposure, I need to close down my aperture by two stops. There we go. And now you can see that Carolina's skin tones are properly exposed. All right, everyone, that's all we have time for today. If you wanna see the rest of this video tutorial, if you wanna read the exclusive companion guide and download projects that you can use to practice these techniques at home, be sure to check out the full course at filmskills.com. Now, if you really want to improve the quality of your productions, I'll take you much deeper into the entire filmmaking process in the paid course at Film Skills Unlimited, where I partnered with Airy, Audio Technica, Panavision, Matthew Studio Equipment, Ledgo, and Kinoflow to produce an online training curriculum so complete that over 115 film schools, universities, and film commissions use my program. Plus, I sat down with over 70 Academy Award and Emmy-winning filmmakers who reveal the techniques they use to produce the biggest TV shows and movies ever made. So join over 20,000 filmmakers and learn how to write better screenplays, become a more effective director on set, master advanced cinematography techniques, unlock the full capabilities of your camera and lens, improve your shots with Hollywood lighting techniques, learn how to record audio, design sets, edit, and much more. And as a special bonus, I've also negotiated special discounts on software and gear just for Film Skills members. And as a member, you also have exclusive access to hundreds of projects and exercises to practice and hone your skills. Plus, nearly 2,000 pages of my illustrated companion guides, personal mentoring, job shadows, and much more. 
So check out filmskills.com for more information. And by the way, you're also invited to join my free one hour filmmaking course where I share my top 10 secrets to achieving a professional look that helped me grow a career shooting in over 35 countries for top studios and brands. So check out the link below to register for my free one hour filmmaking course and learn how to become a better filmmaker at Film Skills, the online film school built by filmmakers for filmmakers. <laughs>